Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I'm Lisa Blackburn. This is my YouTube channel where we talk about everything I want to, science and math. And today we are finishing the notes for Unit 4 about bonding, ionic and covalent. Um, and hopefully we're finishing. I think we will. All right. Um, so y'all don't have to be shy or anything. Nobody will be able to identify you. And nobody's going to watch this except probably the people who are out. So I don't expect this to go viral. <laughs> let's hope not. All right. Um, let's talk about, we've talked about ionic bonds. What kind of elements are ionic bonds between? What two kinds of elements make up an ionic bond? Uh, an ion. A cation and an anion. Which side of the periodic table does the cations come from? <laughs> so is that a metal or a non-metal? It's a metal. So ionic bonds are between a metal and a non-metal. The metal is the cation, the non-metal is the anion. Make sense? Yes? Okay. So now we're going to talk about, and remember, electrons are tra transferred. Now, we, we talked about salt domes, didn't we? Yeah. That what did they talk about storing in them? Radioactive. Radioactivity. But I was talking to Mr. Myrick about it, and he, he, his graduate degree is in geology. He is, is not like education, it's geology. So he's a geologist, and he was saying that that's not what they store in them. They store something else in them. <coughs> that was too controversial. What they store in them is oil. He said that the national oil reserves are stored in salt domes in the Gulf. That's interesting, isn't it? He said the inside part becomes liquid from all the high pressure, and so he thinks it's a very bad idea to store radioactive substances in it. So let's do that first. Let's write that. Um, is, now you already have this. So what we're going to say is no and write oil instead. Because Mr. Myrick says no to the radioactive stuff, oil is what you store in those things. So that's interesting. Okay, so electrons are transferred. Remember yesterday we talked about these are the people who like steal the baby <coughs> from somebody else and keeps it. So that the baby is the electron that gets stolen. What's the covalent bonds? What kind of parents are these? Some of you have parents like this? Divorce. Statistically, a group of kids this big, somebody in here's parents are divorced. So, got to be. So, remember, they work out a sharing arrangement, and that shared electron is the bond. So, it, with covalent bonds, is between two non-metals. So, like carbon and another carbon. The shared electron pair makes the bond. Let me explain this to you. <coughs> uh, here is a carbon. That's the valent structure of the Lewis structure of carbon. And carbon can make a covalent bond with hydrogen. The hydrogen puts in an electron and the carbon puts in an electron and what makes their bond is the shared pair the two dots makes a chemical bond so this would be like divorced parents who have twins <laughs> they can't just share one child they have to share two any questions about that nope okay they usually don't share the electron equally now, that's true with the parents, too, isn't it? Most people don't spend Monday with mom, Tuesday with dad, Wednesday with mom, Thursday with dad, right? The, the, those of you with divorced parents, nobody does that, right? Except I knew one family who did. I knew this family in East Cobb, and I knew the stepmom. So the mom and dad got divorced, and this is, I knew the lady who married the dad. Well, they were living their life in their house, and uh, the mom 
decided that not the stepmom, the biological mom, decided to buy the house next door when it went up for sale. And so the kid would spend Monday with mom, Tuesday with dad, Wednesday with mom, and the stepmom did not like it. The stepmom thought that was too close to have the ex next door. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think that'd be a little too much? And she would also, um, like, you know, call the ex-husband over if the sink wasn't working and all that. The, the new wife felt like the old wife was trying to keep the relationship up a little too much. <laughs> so anyway, with people and elements, they usually don't share equally. Now, they do sometimes with the elements, just like I guess they do sometimes with people. Oh, one of my students today told me that her parents had a completely equal sharing, but it was one week, the next week, the next week, the next week. So every other week, she's either at her mom's or dad's. So it's straight down the middle, complete sharing. So just like some of these elements here. So they're, this, they're only shared equally when they're bonded to an identical atom. When they're bonded to an identical atom. Um, this call, this uh, an example is diatomic molecules. What does di mean? Two. two. So these are diatomic, two of the same thing, molecules. And some diatomic molecules, and you, eventually you're going to need to memorize this is H2 hydrogen, um, I like to put them in order, yep, N2, come on right, there you go, N2, O2, um, F2, see they're bounded to themselves, Cl2, Br2, and then going on down here, I2, and, uh, and that's all. Okay, now what do you notice about these, these things? Uh, what, lo looking at the periodic table, what state of matter are most of these? Yes. They're gas. So all of these um, are gas, and yeah, all of these are gas at room temperature, so most of them are gas. That's why we have our balloon. This one is a liquid, and this one is a solid. And by tradition, those are written in cursive. So, yeah, mostly gases, and they're because they're so balanced. Now, there's another example of something that is bonded to itself, is carbon bonds to itself. Carbon can bond to itself. And the whole uh, field of chemistry called organic is based on carbon chemistry. And we'll learn more about that next week. And I'm deciding how much we'll learn about it. I'm, I'm sort of learning, leaning toward, let's learn a little bit more. All right. So, how, which one gets more? Now, just like how divorced parents don't usually share equally, and usually the mom gets the kid more, right? Not always, but usually the mom gets the kid more. With the elements, it is the one that is more electronegative. The one that is more electronegative gets the electron more. Um, this, uh, so, Oh, I'll tell you a second. This causes the atom to have a positive and a negative side. It's not an electron transfer like it was with ionic. It's just that, like in, with water, oxygen keeps the electron more than the hydrogens do. So the hydrogens, they get the electron every now and then, but not often. So the, it turns out that the oxygen is, got, is more negative, the hydrogens are more positive, and it causes the molecule to have a slight positive end and a sp slight negative end. And the, it's called having dipole moments. Okay, I understand di, because there's two of them, the positive end and the negative end. I understand pole. 
The earth has a north pole and a south pole. The earth has ends. But I just don't understand the moments. It sounds like it's having a cup of coffee, doesn't it? Dipole moments. When you get to eat chocolate that your kids don't know about. It might be bipolar. Or bipolar, right. <laughs> These atoms might be bipolar. That'd be a whole different thing. All right, so there are symbols for this. Um, and it's a partial positive or negative charge. And what it is, is it looks like this. It looks like an eight that you don't finish. And then you put a little plus or a little minus. Okay, so those are Greek letters. Learning Greek again. Don't we feel smart? Another way to show this is with an arrow. And you draw the arrow and you put the arrow tail that looks like a plus over the positive side and the arrow head that's pointy like a negative sign over the negative side of the atom. So here is an example. Here's water. Water is H2O. The hydrogens end up positive. The oxygen ends up negative. So I say it looks like unimpressed Mickey Mouse. But lately, my students have all been saying, no, it looks like unimpressed Kermit the Frog. What do y'all think? Yeah. Kermit is winning still? Y'all well, yeah, should say Mickey Mouse because I might start singing Rainbow Connection if I think too much about Kermit. All right, so how you would do this is you could show, you could draw these little symbols and say that it's plus here and plus there and it's negative down here. Or you draw an arrow right through where sort of the middle part of the positive charge and you draw your arrow showing that it's positive on this side and negative on that side. So this is so, what, one of the things you do is you label polarity in the molecule. Now, whether a bond is considered covalent or, a, or a ionic is based on a numerical rating. And I'm planning of giving you the chart so you can, there I did it, put a little star by the things I want to give you. Uh, to, I want to plan on giving you the chart so you can understand this a little bit better. That it's not just covalent or ionic, it's sort of a sliding scale. You look at the scale and you figure out whether it's considered ionic or covalent. Do you, when do you consider it a share, and when do you consider it they flat stole that electron, so it's not sharing anymore, okay? Which made me think about what my kid, what my kid said about divorce earlier today. I won't share it. It was a little personal about her life. Okay, bond angles. Let's roll up, and we'll talk about bond angles just a little bit. Okay, so when you make these, these chemicals, not you make them, but when they're made, then these bonds are at different angles. Like how Mickey Mouse, the ears were up here. They weren't over here. You know, that, that water had a, has a definite shape with certain angles there. We're going to do a little lab on that Monday or Tuesday. I'm leaning toward Tuesday of next week. Now, what these bond angles are based on is called Vesper Theory. And if you look at our standard, it says I'm not supposed to teach that to you, but I'm a rebel, and I'm going to teach it to you anyway. Uh, because I like to look at the big picture things in chemistry. It helps you organize the little bits of information. It's hard to memorize in a vacuum. It's hard to learn without understanding. And, and Vesper Theory is what makes the bond angles make sense. So we're going to learn that even though they tell me not to teach it. I'm just going to do it anyway. I can't help myself. I have to teach it. So um, I do want to tell you this, though. Lone pairs, I wrote on it, uh, lone pairs, let me show you what that is. I'll draw it over here so that we're on here. Um, if you have, ah, my sleeve's writing on it. If you have nitrogen, okay, and we were to do the electron dot formula for the Lewis structure for nitrogen, how many dots do I put on it? Do you remember how to find that out? 
you count how many squares over it is. How many squares over is nitrogen? Five. So I start on one side, one, and then I keep putting dots around, and they each get one before they double up. Whose rule is that? Huns. Yes, very good. So now I've got my five dots here. Where this is going to make bonds is wherever it has one dot. It only has one dot, it wants to have two. Because if it has two, then in the end, it'll feel like it has eight. It'll feel like a noble gas. Two, four, six, eight. So hydrogens can come along and put in their one dot. Here are our hydrogens putting in their one dot. These are not very good dots. Let's see if I can make them better with my finger. Still pretty bad. All right. So now the hydrogens feel like heliums because they have two dots, and the nitrogen feels like neon. Does that make sense? Because it has eight. Now, this, each one of these two, I know it doesn't look like two, but it's the board. Um, each one of these two dots is a bond, but up here, there are two dots that are not bonded to anything. That's called a lone pair or an unshared pair. And the unshared pair is this group of negativity that causes certain things in chemistry we will learn more about, including it affects the bond angles that this bonds at, which we'll learn about more in our lab. Now, uh, did I tell y'all where the ammo name ammonia comes from? No, now's a good time. Um, so there are certain chemicals that have been around since ancient times. And this actually goes back to Egypt. Remember the Egyptian gods, ancient Egypt? And remember the god Ammon or Amun-Ra? Do y'all remember that from your Egyptian myth mythology a little bit? There was one that they, they worshipped, Amun-Ra. And they would do human sacrifice to him and kill people and burn them up. And then it would rain, and when it rained, the, those ashes, those human ashes in the rain would mix together to form ammonia. Ammonia has a very distinct smell, and they would smell it, and they thought it was Ammon Ra coming to collect the souls of those that had been sacrificed to him. So that's where our name ammonia comes from. We still have Ammon, Ammon in it. Isn't that kind of interesting? And gross. But, um... Uh, that's where that name comes from, is from that. Glad I don't live in ancient Egypt where I might get sacrificed to Amun-Ra. Glad to be here now teaching you. All right. Um, let's see. Next, so we're gonna, you're going to learn more about what these lone pairs do later. We're going to take these notes basically, but then we're going to come back and add more to them later. So don't, don't be discouraged about that. All right, numerical value, lone pair, unshared pair. Okay, so I do want to show you this. So if we have, this is a Lewis structure. So like the Lewis structure for methane. Methane has got a carbon. Uh, the, how many squares over is carbon? Four. four. So it gets four dots. And carbon will also bond to hydrogens and make this, me this molecule, I might are wrong there, called methane. Okay, so there it is. Those two dots should have been next to each other. Let's erase them and fix it. Oh, wait, dot. Okay, let's try again. Put that C back. Just try for two dots. Okay, that's better. So that's the Lewis structure formula. The hydrogens are all happy. They feel like helium. The carbon's happy. It feels like neon. The molecular formula for this is you write C.